Good afternoon, everyone. JR with Secure Metals uh, with your technical update for the precious metals market. Today is Thursday, September the 5th, 2013, and it is uh, 2.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, before I get into the analysis, I wanted to go over just uh, briefly here on this uh, Syrian war, this the war out in Syria. And uh, I was searching through the, uh, I guess, uh, the different websites, and I found the New York Times. This was actually the front cover of the New York Times, um, this picture here. Uh, but what I realized when I found this is this is not a picture, this is actually a video. And if you click on the video, this is basically uh, the Syrian rebels executing these, uh, these uh, Syrian soldiers. I, um, I haven't watched the video. I don't really care to watch the video. I have no interest in watching the video. I'm not. I'm not going to play this video either. Um, I don't even think I'll put the link below. Um, but with that said, I was really just looking uh, to see what uh, any updates were, and uh, I think it's pretty insane that these are the guys that we are uh, funding. These are the guys that we are uh, backing, and um, you know ultimately this is the precious metals market and of course this is good for the metals uh, but this is obviously not what we want um, but it's really a shame that we're even debating about it so let me get this straight so Syria is uh, obviously going through a civil war uh, so Syria is attacking Syria and the US is upset so because Syria is attacking Syria we are going to attack Syria so, you know, let these guys have their civil wars and, you know, I guess my point is there's no way our tax dollars should be contributing to any of this. You know, imagine us uh, back in the, 18th, uh, in the 1800s, we're going through the civil war. Imagine us with our civil war and uh, another country is going to come in and take sides uh, on this war. You know, this is a civil war at the end of the day and we should just allow this war to be. Um, again, this is a very graphic video. I, I don't I, like, like I said, I haven't watched it and I suggest that and I, I wouldn't uh, unless you like watching that sort of stuff. But I did read the um, I did read the article and basically he's saying a prayer and after he's done saying the prayer, he this guy t he's saying a prayer here and after he's done with his prayer, apparently he fires a bullet into the back of the first prisoner's head. His gunmen follow suit. Uh, promptly killing all the other men at their feet so again disgusting and I can't believe we're even considering going to war I can't imagine anything positive coming out of this um, really I can't imagine anything positive coming out of this so um, I think um, for political reasons and not for the reasons that we would like for the first time I um, I'm, I'm, I agree with Obama when he says that he is looking for congressional approval uh, before he goes and strike, but I think we all know, and I and I praise him for doing that. Unfortunately, I don't believe that he's doing that for the right reasons. I personally believe that this is a political uh, move. There, the opposition on this war is so great that I I don't think he wanted to do this on him on himself uh, um, by himself. And also, you ha also have to keep in mind that it really in the history of the U.S. You know, when the president asks for something, for, for especially when, uh, when we're talking about wars, Congress has never uh, denied him. So I'm afraid that uh, once Congress gets back from their little vacation or whatever the case is, I suspect that they will approve for a limited strike on Syria, which I am tremendously um, afraid of, uh, of, of an approval. Uh, but at any rate... Um, regardless of that, uh, if we do go um, and strike Syria, keep in mind that Russia is already on the other side. And um, again, this is a civil war. We should just allow them to be and let them take care of their own issues. We should take care of the uh, domestic issues before we start trying to fix other issues because uh, we have a lot of problems. I'll tell you a problem that we have. This is a big problem. This is a problem here, okay? 16.9 trillion in US debt. Debt ceiling is set roughly at uh, just a little bit under 16.7 trillion. And we have once again 
cross the debt ceiling and um, which is great news for gold um, and most likely again the, day, the ceiling debates you're starting to hear it on TV again and uh, on the mainstream media of course that's going to be another distraction uh, but at any rate I found some charts here that are relevant to uh, gold so this is your debt ceiling uh, this is the blue line is your debt ceiling and the uh, black line is your gold prices now we have seen a few gold uh, uh, divergences where gold dips and the debt ceiling stays flat of course oh gold seems to constantly catch up to this debt uh, ceiling okay, this is not the clearest chart in the world here but I think I have another one so again so this is a clear uh, this is a much clearer picture of the debt of the debt limit uh, of the debt ceiling versus the gold prices and we can clearly see here that we had a big divergence back in 2008 uh, when a gold uh, basically lost over uh, almost 40 percent and came down uh, and of course the debt ceiling continued to go higher and of course you saw that gold just caught up to the debt ceiling so uh, this is really a um, you know you would imagine that if the, the if the current debt ceiling right now is a 16 7 or just a little bit under then they're probably gonna raise it up to somewhere uh, in the 17 trillion dollar range to possibly the 18 trillion dollar range and of course gold will have to follow suit as well so again we look at these graphs really to because uh, these are the graphs that that make sense out of out of things that don't really make a lot of sense and we can clearly see here in 2008 that we did see a divergence where the debt ceiling was raised and of course the prices of gold plunged along with the Dow Jones and everything else uh, but again we're seeing the same uh, thing here where the debt ceiling is most likely going to continue to rise and of course you're going to see uh, we expect gold to continue to go much 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 higher based on uh, this um, this um, this chart here so again you know political tension guys uh, debt ceiling debate I mean really it just doesn't really get any better for this market um, if you ask me this is really just this was really just a breather uh, that gold uh, really gold just really took a breather if you ask me and uh, I do expect much higher higher prices so guys this is your daily chart I'll do gold I'll do silver I'll do the dollar and I'll also uh, get with the Dow Jones on the technical side here so this is your daily chart here on gold uh, obviously currently in a very nice upward uh, trend here uh, found support here at the 1272 so we're looking to find some support here around the 1350 range uh, roughly around here okay and this will also um, so we have a few things holding us uh, we have a few things that will keep us keep us well supported we have your 100 day moving average 1359 we have this line here uh, roughly 1345 and of course your 50 day moving average is uh, curving to the upside of course the 20 day moving average at 1376 will also serve as support and I do expect once we test if we test this line here I do expect us to create a new high um, and possibly go down to go up to the 1450 range all right that's your daily chart those stochastics are still falling a bit more so again a good shot a good chance that we probably uh, will test the 1355 1350 range uh, before continuing to go higher um, and again, you know, stochastics are showing a little bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a trend as well. So we could find some support here at this, um, at this line. Okay, if we look at the weekly chart now, as of now, we are uh, slightly under the 20 uh, day moving average, uh, but still above the 100 and the 50 day moving average. Let's look at the weekly chart here. The weekly chart looking really nice as well okay uh, this is your weekly chart uh, the 20 day moving average I mean you can see here that really we haven't touched this 20 day moving average since uh, back in December um, of 2012 and this 20 day moving average really has served us as a as a, as a line of of, of, of major uh, resistance uh, fortunately we we're able to surpass this line 
the line is beginning to curve here um, and that's a positive move for us uh, stochastics are on the high side and of course we do have to keep in mind that we are still until we can really surpass these lines here we're still in a downtrend um, so this might be the way it'll play out but um, so still in a downtrend and again looking to find some support around the 1350 area stochastics are fa um, falling now uh, so again we could find some support here at the 20-day moving average uh, but these weekly charts tend to um, they tend to even though this points down this will tend to to fold back up here uh, especially as bullish as this daily chart and the weekly chart look as well um, so again I do expect to find some support here uh, before continuing to go higher I don't really expect this really the only thing we shouldn't want to do is create another low and um, a new low so we can see here that we have a low a higher low we're looking to find a higher low we have a high higher high higher high and that's what we're looking to uh, accomplish we're looking to continue to uh, create new highs uh, or maybe some sideways consolidation but ultimately we definitely this is really the number we don't want to go anywhere around at 1272 I would argue I would actually say that if we do see prices go below 1270 most likely we will see newer new lows um, if we look at silver now uh, silver uh, again same thing with this 20-day moving average this has really been a hard 20-day uh, moving average line for us we finally curved it to the upside and now this is uh, serving as, as resistance I'm sorry as support stochastics are beginning to um, uh, to come down but again we we seem to have some support here on this uh, roughly around here if you're looking at this why does this, this thing not working properly? Anyway, so again, so, so stochastics, you might find some support here on the stochastics um, around this area here. But again, this is a very positive 20 day moving average, and I do expect this to hold support. Again, worst case scenario, we can do uh, a Fibonacci retracement here from the bottom to the high. Um, so again, we could see what we don't necessarily, we don't want to go too far below 23. Um, especially on this rally because uh, anything below 23 um, 38 percent Fibonacci will make us zigzag around this area and we don't really care to zigzag we want this uh, trend to continue to be nice and strong uh, and we really don't want to fall below this level here the 23 uh, potentially we could go down to 22 and a half and so on we have a lot of support here and if we do I mean most likely we will be well supported at the 61 percent Fib level here um, around the $21 range. I don't think we'll go down that far, but again, if I want this uh, chart to continue to look as nice as it does, I want this 38% Fibonacci retracement to hold. Uh, we can also do it from the, um, the June low. And really, this is the area where we don't want to fall below. The 2248 level is really a level where we don't want to fall below if we want this metal to continue to rally to the $26 range, which I think would be the next um, the, the next technical level. Sagastics are still pointing down, so we could fall down further down to, again, the 2250 range. If we look at the weekly chart here, again, um, just just really nice 20-day uh, moving average curving here um, and again a lot of nice bullish candles so um, as of now guys it, it just really looks really nice and I do anticipate us to test this $25 level here pretty soon uh, test this 200-day moving average and possibly take this to uh, the um, the next level here which is roughly some big levels in this chart here see here so this is where so this is where we're looking to so obviously we found some resistance here at the 2450 level um, but again we have a nice curvature here on the 20-day moving average I would like to test this uh, low here this uh, support line now turn resistance uh, so this would be the next level I would uh, shoot for the 26 36 range 
if we can uh, surpass that line, if we can sur surpass that line here, I would expect prices to test the $29 range. And as you can see, when silver moves and when gold moves, they move fast. And we're talking about the debt ceiling again. Uh, a lot of political tensions, that, as we can see around the world. And um, um, not, I mean, nothing but positive on these charts, at least for now. All right. Uh, as far as silver goes, I'll do one last line that we want, might want to keep in uh, mind. This line here. Okay. And currently we are finding some support here at the bottom of this channel here. So we could uh, we could come down again, test the 2250 range and continue to go higher to test this. I think once we can surpass this $28 level, I think it'll be very positive. A few closes, a few daily closes above this level, uh, um, I think would easily bring us to the $29 range, okay? Let's look at the uh, Dow Jones now, okay? The Dow Jones, um, I actually uh, noticed this the other day. Uh, the Dow Jones is actually creating a, um, a uh, broadening formation within the broadening formation that it currently has. Um, I've talked about this formation here for quite some time, but this is on the monthly chart. So again, uh, a very, very long-term chart. This is your formation here. And that's it there. So this is your monthly uh, broadening formation. Uh, as we can see here, just uh, just uh, this is the scariest chart I've ever seen. I mean, I'll tell you, the Dow Jones comes down to 5,000, and I think you've seen a couple reports if you watch the mainstream where they are uh, actually beginning to talk about $6,000 uh, Dow Jones prices. So, of course, with a weak economy and uh, no support, no job creation, and no real uh, evidence of an economic recovery, there's really no reason to, to uh, deny this chart or throw away this chart and assume that the U.S. is um, exempt from another crash, okay? Um, let's quickly look at the, well, let me finish off this, um, this uh, chart here. So the daily chart starting to move back up here. Um, again, like I said, if the Dow Jones, you know, says similar to the silver chart that I was pointing out, um, if we want the Dow Jones to continue to move higher, we don't want this Dow Jones to go below 14.4, which is a 38% Fibonacci retracement. Everyone trades the Fib levels a little bit different. I personally don't want this. Uh, I don't want the uh, these prices to uh, go below this 38% Fib level, because again, if it does, then it just turns into chaos, and um, that's not what we want. We want nice and smooth, is what we're looking for. And that's your uh, the stochastics are pointing higher, so we could test these levels here: the 20-day, the 100-day, and the 50-day moving average. As of now, they are all above us, which is definitely not too positive. Um, and if we look at the weekly chart here, then um, again, really nice uh, bullish um, formation here, where you have this coming down and you have this going up. Uh, that's fairly bullish, but uh, might just be short-term bullish because, again, we don't necessarily want to count this one. This is the, the last one that we want to count here. Um, so, again, based on this run-up and the stochastics are already getting to the bottom here, there is a good chance that the Dow Jones will continue to head higher. Uh, this is your Dow Jones versus gold. We can clearly see that the uh, correlation became positive here. Um, we have a positive correlation here, a divergence. Uh, negative correlation here, positive again, negative here where the Dow Jones takes off, gold tanks, and uh, roughly around this area here, maybe around May, uh, sometime in the May, uh, in the month of May, we saw the Dow Jones take a little bit of a hit. We also go, saw gold take a hit, and uh, you saw the gold rally, you saw the Dow Jones do a quick rally, and now we're beginning to turn negative again where the Dow Jones is going down this time around, and gold is continuing to go higher. For example, today you had uh, a little bit of a downside move on gold, and of course you had a bit of a move to the upside on the Dow Jones. So I expect this market to, to find a balance here pretty soon, and these, uh, um, these, uh, uh, these two can start trading in a positive correlation again. All right, last but not least, let's bring the dollar into play here. Uh, 
by the way, if I look at this gold chart here, I mean, if I look at this Dow Jones chart here on the daily, and uh, we look at this uh, broadening formation, let's clean this up, this broadening formation, then I guess you can say that that if this uh, broadening formation plays out, where this goes up and this goes down, you know, again, we could find some support here at the 38% Fibonacci retracement. So that might uh, might be a great time to uh, uh, add to your positions on the Dow Jones. Uh, that's my opinion. And of course, let's bring in the, the US dollar here. Where is that dollar? Here it is. So here is the dollar. Let's bring this into a more familiar so this is your dollar. Dollar has been having a, a pretty good, uh, a pretty good um, couple of days. Uh, let's print some lines into play here, and of course we're still following this broadening formation. I uh, I do expect this to find some support here uh, pretty soon, and again continue to go higher as the metals. I'm sorry, continue to go lower as the metals continue to go higher. But again, we can clearly see that this is a broadening formation where you have a set of higher highs and a set of lower lows. And again, these formations are usually bearish, um, okay? So uh, besides that, um, again, we have had a big, uh, a decent move to the upside, but again, let's bring this real quick. All right, so stochastics are uh, already on the um, oversold area, so it could be that, you know, you can see this, this um, uh, this dollar uh, maybe go a bit higher, but ultimately it's getting overbought, and uh, we're we're um, we'd be looking for another um, another leg down here for the U.S. dollar. That as a, as a result of that, we should see higher metal prices. All right, guys, that's about it for today. Um, I hope everyone had a great weekend, uh, a great Labor Day weekend, and um, thanks for joining me. I will see you next time. Bye bye.